Hi, this is Julio for Polycam, and in this tutorial, rendering out videos and animations, I'm going to show you how to capture a scene using cinematics in Unreal Engine. In the previous tutorials in this series, creating a character and creating an environment, we went through the process of designing a custom video game using real-life friends we scanned using Polycam, and environmental scans we acquired through Polycam Explorer. In this tutorial, we'll bring this scene to life. I'll show you how to set up cameras in your level and how to apply them to shot tracks in Unreal Engine's Cinematic Application Sequencer Editor. I'll show you the basics of the Sequencer Editor and how to construct your own animated film by combining various shots and recording gameplay of our character Bryn running through space. Let's have some fun! Awesome! So the first thing I'm going to do is open the Epic Games Launcher and find my project called Creating an Environment from my previous tutorial, Creating an Environment. Now I'll find my view, open my content browser, and the first thing I'll want to do is create a two-pane view. To do that, go in the top left-hand corner, click the caret, and select two panes. Now you'll see on the right side I have what's called a cinematic viewport, and this is going to be very helpful when we're putting together our animated film. If yours is not on cinematic viewport, you can change that where it says perspective here. Awesome. So now another note to make is to hide any widgets in your scene, hit G on your keyboard. Our next step is going to be making a level sequence where we'll add shots and cameras. To do that, go up towards the cinematics in the top toolbar, click into your cinematics folder, and title your level sequence master. Awesome. Once that's open, we can start bringing in more shots into our scene. To do that, right click, select animation level sequence, and I'll call this one shot 01. Our next step is going to be to click the master and then we'll see sequencer open. Now we'll go in the top left hand icon where it says plus track, select shot track, where it says plus shot, select shot one. Now you see we have placed our shot inside our sequencer. To adjust the end frame of your shot, you can slide this red line that will adjust the length that your shot can go to. You can also type here in the cinematic viewport where you want it to be. I'm going to extend this to 3200 frames. Uh, I think we're going to end up making an animated film that's around maybe two minutes long. So once you do that, select your shot, control C and control V to copy and paste it to create a new one. Now I can click into shot one and add my camera. So this is the next step where in my left sided pane, I'm going to find the view that I'd like to capture on camera. So pretty much what you can do is manually find the view that you want. I'd like to start kind of far out so we can see the whole scene. So that looks good to me. The next step is going to be creating a cinema camera. Click on that top carrot again. Click where it says create camera here, cine camera actor. Then go to plus track in the sequencer, actor to sequencer and select your cine camera actor. Now our camera is placed inside our shot. Excellent. So you see that now the shot is a little bit short, so I'm going to extend it in my master and adjust the red line once more within the shot. Great. So now I'm going to go through the process of positioning my camera. And I kind of want to have the camera start at this far distance and zoom in. To do that, find your cine camera actor in the world outliner and set it to pilot mode. Now you can basically track the movement in pilot mode. You can also adjust the camera settings on this right hand tab. I'm going to change mine to 69 DSLR. So now to save the placement, select transform and hold S. Then you can move your marker, find your next time frame that you'd like to use, 
and save another placement for your camera. I'm going to set my to frame 200 and then I'll zoom in. You can also use the W, S, A, and D keys on your keyboard to position your camera accordingly and move through your scene. So I want to end up here more or less so I can see uh, our main character Bryn from far away. Great. So once I do that, I'll again hit S to save that movement. Now, if I go there, I can see it starting from a far distance at frame zero. Another note is on this right hand, you can change the focus settings. Here it says manual focus distance. Use the eyedropper tool, select where you want to focus, and that will alter the focus distance. And then again, find it in your sequencer and hit S to save whatever quality you'd like to make a keyframe for. I'm going to do this once again and change my focus settings for my final keyframe where I see Bryn from far away. Then I'll hit S to save it again. Now you can see our camera moving and how the focal settings also change as we move. Awesome. Another note, you might see on the right hand cinematic viewport, the only way to have it visible is to select that camera icon. Now when you hit play, you can see your shot. Now I'll hit save. And now I'm going to go through the same process of creating various shots and placing my cameras where I'd like to, to showcase different elements of my scene. This is the fun part where you can basically construct your animated film to show the progression through your space. I definitely want to capture the various friends that I scanned using Polycam and animated using Adobe Mixamo. Here you can make a series of vignettes to capture your scene. Like here, I'll capture Larissa from far away, and I'll make sure to bring the camera movement inside. Now we can capture Boris as he dances the Roomba. And then I'll again use keyframes to have my camera move to pan to Bryn dancing. Last but not least, I'll make another cinema camera actor on the roof here with my three roommates dancing. Now we can hit play and see in the cinematic viewport how it will look in our film. Awesome. So the next step we want to do is to record gameplay, as that will be a fun thing to include in our film. To do that, click Window and open the Sequence Recorder. Then you can click Add, select that bar that says Actor, and then scroll down to where it says Actor to Record, and select the actor you'd like to choose. I'm going to select Third Person Character, which is our character Bryn. Make sure to uncheck in animation settings, record in world space, and remove root position. Now we can select record, and hit play. And now is the fun part, where you can basically navigate through your scene, and record this movement into your film. Nice. So I, I basically recorded more or less a minute of footage. So now what I'm going to do is go back to my cinematics folder, go into recorded sequences, and there I'll find my recorded sequence that I just made. If you use your marker, you can see the recording happening as Bryn moves throughout the space. Now we can go back to our master and place this recorded sequence into our scene. Move your marker to the end of your last shot. Then where it says plus shot, select recorded sequence. And there you'll see your recorded sequence placed. I'll again adjust my red end marker. And another thing you have to do is actor sequencer, create a camera cut track. This basically will allow us to see our recorded sequence. Where it says plus camera, select the third person character. Now we can see the third person character view 
as the recording that we just took using the sequence recorder. Now I've found my final frame, 3383, three, and I can save it. Last but not least, we can render this video. Select this icon. I'm going to change my resolution to 3840 by 2160. Use the video sequence setting and find the appropriate path. Then you can hit capture movie and make sure to save. Now Unreal will render out our film and we can see how it ended up. Let's check it out. you guys enjoyed this tutorial where we created a whole scene using polycam and rendered out videos using Unreal Engine's sequencer. Have fun and show us what you make. <laughs>